Jigsaw.exe wants to play a game, and the odds don't seem to be in your favor. Maybe you clicked a link you weren't supposed to, maybe you fell for a spam email. How you got here doesn't matter now. All that matters is how well you play. There are multiple versions of the file that you've fallen victim to, but the most iconic one will greet you as such. A window shoots up on screen, revealing the red, spiraling cheeks of a character you might recognize. Green text, letter by letter, begins crawling over a black background. It looks exactly like those mock hacking scenes in movies, but you're about to learn just how thin the line between fiction and reality can be. The text begins laying out the rules. Your computer files have been encrypted. Your photos, videos, documents, etc. But don't worry, I have not deleted them yet. You have 24 hours to pay 150 USD in bitcoins to get the decryption key. At this point, it's natural for most people to feel anxious, maybe even skeptical. As the text crawls slowly, you might even be inclined to try and terminate the process. Bad move. The jigsaw virus counts these as infractions of its rules, and it'll result in a thousand files being purged as punishment. In some version, this rule is laid out clearly. In others, it's something people had to learn the hard way. When the text crawl is finished, there's something new in the window. Red numbers over a black background, like a bomb illustrating the countdown has begun. You might even be inclined to call the virus a bluff, only to see that your other files, indeed, are all locked away. But instead of outright deleting all of those files at the 24 hour mark, the virus wants you to feel the heat rising. Of the some 61 variants I could find being recorded, most versions of the virus will begin wiping your data little by little. At the 60 minute mark, after not paying in the first 24 hours. From then on, the pressure rises. As the text explains, are you familiar with the concept of exponential growth? Let me help you out. It starts out slowly, then increases rapidly. During the first 24 hours, you will only lose a few files. The second day, a few hundred, the third day, a few thousand, and so on. Less than three days from now, you realize everything will be lost. You look down at the end of the lines and lines of text explaining the rules. You see the address they want you to pay to. $150 USD, or 0.4 Bitcoin at the time, was the most commonly recorded ransom that was demanded. $150, you think, might not be that bad. For many of us, we'd pay even more to recover what may be lost. Pictures, work files, family records, archives, etc. $150? No. It could be way worse. You look at that last line of text, taunting you as the timer claims, five minutes have already passed. Now let's start and enjoy our little game together. But before we dive into this mysterious virus, a quick word from today's video sponsor, Babbel. Learning a second language is something that can be both very difficult and very rewarding. I have personally always struggled to learn a second language even with traditional classes but Babbel has made it easy. Babbel is a language learning app that simplifies the entire process of learning a new language. They focus on teaching the most important practical language to be used in conversation in short 10 minute interactive lessons. Because of this, Babbel has helped me in getting to a point where I was actually comfortable enough to use the Spanish I learned through their app while on a recent trip to ask for directions to the nearest bus stop. In addition, they actually make learning interesting with podcasts, lessons, live classes, and even games to help you on your journey. With the new year finally here, now is the perfect time to get started and actually learn that new language that you've always wanted. If you'd like to give Babbel a try and get up to 60% off, click the link down in the description below or scan the QR code on screen. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring this video and making this content possible. Now let's take a look at this strange virus. Despite how dicey it all seems, there was an easy way to win this game, playing it by the malware's rules. It goes against basically all professional advice, but I was surprised to learn that quote unquote playing, as in transferring the correct amount of money to the account, would give some people a decryption key. Usually this wouldn't happen, as exchanging USD for Bitcoin and sending it meant that the thieves had already gotten what they wanted from you. There was no refunds and there would be little incentive for them to stick to their own rules when they've already won. And yet sometimes they actually did. 
Just like that, the malware would release your data back to you and delete itself from your computer, hopeful but not enthusiastic that you may play again someday. Of course, the odds of this happening got lower with time, as more versions of Jigsaw found their way into the wild. Some would swap out the graphic for other horror movie icons like Pennywise the Clown from It, while others would simply forego an image altogether. And these new versions didn't seem to follow the rules of the game themselves, not releasing the files back once the ransom was actually paid. But as a unique artifact in the history of ransomware, the virus itself was most sinister when drawing from its namesake. That original character, the mascot you see, is dubbed Billy the Puppet, the mouthpiece of the Jigsaw Killer in the Saw franchise. Although the plot gets progressively more complex with every new entry in the series, from the initial seven movies to the more recent successors, the main crux has always been simple. Victims are placed in elaborate traps, often needing to maim themselves to escape before a timer reaches zero, ending their lives for them. Life or limb, the choice usually went. Where most ransomware rely on a sense of urgency to get their victims to pay up, the Jigsaw virus seemed to play into this even more. As noted in the register, it wants to tap into your distress even further. It wants you to feel like you're playing a dangerous game, all in the hopes that you might do anything to make it out. Of course, in this case, with your files rather than your life. Infamous as it is, the virus emerged more than a half decade since the series had concluded its original run as a Halloween box office juggernaut. Initial reports go back to 2016, a record year for ransomware attacks. As noted in an article by BackupAssist.com, a notable aspect of the new malware on the scene was the relatively small amount it was asking for. The money that the virus demanded was far smaller than any other crypto ransomware and also varies wildly, only asking for $20 to $200 USD worth of bitcoins. This led many to believe that Jigsaw is out to cause chaos, not earn cash. Even if cash was secondary, sites like 2Spyware note that Jigsaw may have collected around $450,000 US dollars from its victims within only its first year of release. And surprisingly enough, it has still been spotted in the wild as recently as this year. However, these reports are obviously difficult to corroborate. What we do know is that the virus was first listed for sale on various ransomware boards around March of 2016 that it only infects Windows operating systems, and that its main mode of distribution was and remains spam emails. But perhaps the most important thing is, now we know that there are other ways of playing the game. In an article written by Charlie Osborne, written in the first month the virus made waves across the internet, it was already evident that the virus and its distribution was fatally flawed. The use of c .net in its source code made reverse engineering a solution pretty straightforward. For every variant that sprung up, a decryptor was perfected, sometimes even within weeks. Word of advice for any new players, never ever try paying in the event you're the victim of ransomware. At best, you're securing them an easy win, and at worst, they might be bluffing about your odds of making it out with something. With decryptors now widely available, the concern for many was that a more sophisticated version of Jigsaw would make the rounds, and for a while, one did. This year alone has seen Jigsaw reach the public imagination once again. The FBI has alleged that Moises Luis Zagala Gonzalez, a cardiologist in Venezuela, has been moonlighting as a cyber criminal. As alleged, the multitasking doctor treated patients, created and named his cyber tool after death profited from a global ransomware ecosystem in which he sold the tools for conducting ransomware attacks, trained the attackers about how to extort victims, and then boasted about successful attacks, including by malicious actors associated with the government of Iran. It is alleged that Gonzalez created a second version of the Jigsaw virus, along with the long-standing Thanos virus, named after the Marvel movie villain. But Gonzalez went further offering multiple ways for his customers to pay for the virus, either outright or by buying a license until they saw a return on investment. Gonzalez is also alleged to have offered excellent customer support, which has earned him an excellent reputation in the malware community and a spot on the FBI's wanted list. 
as of today, he has still not been apprehended. As I did my research on different kinds of malware, I thought Jigsaw stood out as an important shift in the landscape. Ransomware attacks are nothing new. Concerningly, they're on the rise, stealing thousands more with each passing year. Many of the most widely reported incidents target hospitals and vital institutions in the public sector. Some, like Jigsaw.exe, are small in scale, targeting persons and not populations. But Jigsaw feels like a next step in the evolution of ransomware attacks. It's as creative as it is sinister, relying on cultural signifiers to gain an upper hand on the victim's best judgment. It's not running quietly in the background, it's using horror references and the aesthetics of hacking and pop culture to gain a psychological edge on its victims. I'd love to hear if any of you have had any experiences with malware that made you deeply uncomfortable, or if you've actually dealt with Jigsaw.exe itself. I'd love to hear your story. And with that, I'd like to end off on one final question. Do you want to play a game? Thanks for watching to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing or dropping a like or comment on the video as it really helps me out. Thanks again and have a good night.